Hi there, this is a Zero training video by Lava Accountants. In today's video, we're going to be looking at putting your payroll information into Zero. Now, if you're using Zero Payroll or another payroll system that integrates directly with Zero, a lot of the information will be directly input into Zero for you. However, it's always good to have a, a good understanding of, of what's happening with your payroll system. Now, payroll is the most important thing you will do as a company. Paying your employees is your key service and it has to be right. It's not an area to scrimp or save and putting the information into zero is key to getting good information out for you to run your business. If we have a look at the bank account here, we can see that Magma Industries has paid its wages on the 31st of October. Then on the 15th of November, it's paid its uh, pension contributions. And on the 19th of November, it's paid HMRC for the PAYE. Now, if we were to put, input these costs directly from the bank into the P&L, they would give a misleading picture because our pension and PAYE costs are showing in November, whereas really they relate to October wages. Also, if tax codes are different, we don't know if we're paying more out in wages um, to our staff than it's collected through PAYE. So what you need to do is you need to reflect the actual cost to you. The actual cost to you is the gross wages, the employer's pension and the employer's national insurance contributions. They're your costs. And it's also important in your chart of accounts, and we'll show you this later, to make sure that you're itemizing those out and you're splitting them so they're showing in the correct part of the profit and loss so you get a good idea of how your business is performing and what, what your staff are costing you to run your business. So here is Magma's payroll. As you can see, they've got three staff in admin, three in warehouse and the director. Our cost, as we mentioned, is the gross wages, the employer's national insurance and the employer's pension. That's the cost to the business. That's what the business is going to have to pay. How it pays it is put into different amounts. So here we can see that there's net wages, there's the employees, pay OIE and employers and I, which is your HMRC payment, and then there's the pension payments. So what we need to do is to group this together. You could enter the payroll for each individual, but that's a long-winded process um, and will take too much time and you won't get much benefit. So what we're going to do is we're going to group these by departments, which you can see we've done here. So we have our admin, warehouse and director uh, payments. So we've grouped those together and we've got a summary of the business. Now what we need to do is get our journal ready, ready for posting into zero. And to do that, we need to make sure our liabilities are all matched up. So here, as you can see, we have our gross wages, our employer's national insurance, our employer's pension, our net wages, PAYE and pensions. These are liabilities that are owed to different people. So go to our balance sheet. And as you can see, that all nets down to nil. So that shows you that we're all in the right spot to process these wages. So in zero, let's go back to the dashboard. And we go with our manual journal. A new journal and it's our October 21 wages 31st of October 2021 and now here we are ready to input the wages now the first of our admin wages these are an expense item so what we'll do is we'll post our salaries here from the uh, generic uh, codes that Xero's given us and this is our admin wage and we just want the gross wages here of 6,100. Now we want to post our direct wages, that's in 320, and we want to put the gross salary in there. And the reason we're putting warehouse in the direct cost is because that's a cost of getting the goods out to the customer. It's always good to show these things separately to see how much it would really cost you to, to service your customers. And again, that's 6,100. And then we have our director's remuneration, which is £737, and that there goes out uh, to the director. That's the optimal salary for a payroll of this size for the director to take up the salary at the most tax efficient rate. Okay, now we want to put our employer's national insurance. So, employer's national insurance, and this is for the expense uh, for the uh, admin staff. And again, it's a debit because it's our expense. 
and here we can see our employers is 53682 and it's the same for the warehouse so we'll put that in as well. Next is the employer's pension contributions because there's no national insurance for the director. And that's one of the key reasons why we pick that salary. Okay, so employer's pension is 126 and 129. So here we go for the, the pension costs. As again, like we said, that's 126. And in our direct wages there, 129. So now here we go and we put our liabilities in. We've got our costs all itemized out. And if we sum that up, we can see 1426564, which agrees there. Now we have to show how that money goes out of the company. So here, and we can group these all together in one go. So here we have our net wages. So we want that to be colored wages payable. And that's 10439.68. Sorry, 98. Now we want our, our PAYE, 825. And again, that's 3145.66. Now we should be left with 680 quid, which we are, which is our pension contribution. And that goes to pensions payable, 858. Now we can see our debits equal our credits. Everything's been dated the 31st of October. And that is how you post your journal into the wages, uh, into the uh, into zero to cover your wages. So when we post that here, that gets posted. And now if we run a profit, a profit and loss and the balance sheet, on our profit and loss, we'll run that for the current month and we can see exactly how much of the, the cost is showing in each month. So if we do that for last month, now we can see our direct wages costs and our cost of sales and our administrative costs in terms of our, our wages here. And it itemizes out everything different. and That's really important to do. It's a key part of, of reporting your payroll properly. In the balance sheet, at the end of last month, we'll show our liabilities. Our wages payable is 1043998, our pension payable 680, and the PAY of 314566. And when we go to process those bank payments, they will net off against these amounts and we will all be cleared in terms of our balance sheet. If you've got any questions, please get in touch with us here at Lava Accountants. We'll be happy to, to help you.